This is Jay Michaels, and we're bringing you some fantastic television courtesy of the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival. This is number 49 of the festival, 49 years. Next year, we begin the flight to 50 at Boston Sci-Fi. Now, Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival is the leading genre film festival in America. And, and my guests today are proof positive of that. You have some of the best filmmakers of the genre here with me today, and they're going to talk about their films. Most of them are short films, and so they're, they're these quick, amazing parables utilizing science fiction to tell stories that, that some of us are afraid to tell in reality. Uh, you don't, you're not here to hear me talk. Uh, all I'm going to say is go to bostonscififilmfestival.com and learn more about this amazing film festival. Now, let's talk to these amazing filmmakers. We're going to start. I'm looking down my row, what we have here. Uh, let's start. Shida Frost. Am I pronouncing your name right? Shayna. Shayna. Oh, I love it. The, oh, Shayna. That's, that's, that's Yiddish for, for lovely, by the way. That's, I, I don't know if you know that. In Yiddish, Shayna means beautiful. So It's Persian, and it's, that's similar. There you go. There you go. I'm I'm losing you. Uh, I'm losing. Is that better? That is much better. Now we can hear you. Wonderful. Shana, Shana, lay it on us. What what what's your film and what's it about? Um. So I am coming with the film It Est. Um. It is about a megalactic captain who finds herself trapped in an ambush. And she fends off, fends herself and her team off from these mysterious beings who are trying to leech out the human experience from her. Wow. Okay. What what what's the inspiration? Why did why did you do this? Um, well, I actually didn't write this piece. Um, I was approached by the producer and writer. Um, and honestly, it really spoke to me. I think it serves to ask this question. I think we asked this question of um survival at all costs, but I think. I read it and I read it as survival at what cost. Um, and so I think that was the thing that I connected to the most with this because there's some really cool action sequences and we had a lot of wire work and they essentially these mysterious beings are trying to like leech the life force out of her. And then she turns around and essentially does that to them and to their planet, she leeches from them. Um, and so it kind of turns around um, the, uh, the ability to survive, I think. So it's some, it's really interesting to me. Do you think we as a society these days, it was very interesting you said that survival at, at all costs and you, you're you looking at it, survival at what cost? Do you think we've gone too far? Do you think we as a, as, as a, a, a planet, I guess I could say that in a science fiction festival, we as a planet, we've, we've kind of, we're not looking at life the way we should? I think so. I mean, I think it's certainly some, a question that everyone should ask themselves. Um, are you living in a way that you feel is one contributing to society? But also I think that there's specifically with this film, greater questions um, in the <laughs> environmental uh, leaching as well. I think we tried to introduce an under layer with that. And I think that that was something that I wanted my audience to walk away with was saying, am I living in a way that contributes or am I living in a way that like takes from? Brilliant. Environmental leaching. <laughs> It's big concepts in about nine and a half minutes. <laughs> you know, if 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 we replaced climate change with environmental leaching, I think people are going to start listening. I think that's maybe. great. What, when, when is it? When is it happening at the festival? Do you know? Do they give you it's, the time? Yeah, it's Wednesday night, so it's opening night at eight p.m. Opening night. You're one of the opening acts of the festival. Excellent. Good for you. Good luck. Congratulate. You're in it. Yes. I'm in it. No, no, I directed it. You directed it even better, even better. That's wonderful. Best of luck to you. I, uh, good for you. Good for you. We're opening with a powerful message already. Thank you. Thank that you is terrific. Too. Now we're turning to uh, Lalitra. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yeah, it's Lalitra. Okay, nice that's you. that's two that I was almost correct on. Okay, we're doing well. <laughs> Tell me about your film. Uh, yeah, I'm the writer and director of a short film called A Capsule for Robin. It's about this dinner party that goes awry when the host's husband reveals that he doesn't want to bring kids into a troubled world. Now, of course, we're playing at the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival, mm -hmm. so there are a few complicating factors, namely the dinner party is happening during the end of the world, 
in the face of humanity's extinction. And it brings up sort of a lot of questions that I think people of my generation and a lot of generations are having about kids, the future, and hope among troubled times. That's a very powerful message. That's a very familiar message to us. But you have something in there very interesting that I just caught on to. The dinner party at the end of the world? Is that what you That's said? That's right. That's right. The dinner yes. party at the end of the world. Why did you do that? You're the writer. Okay. Why? Why a dinner party at the end of the world? That really hits me. Why? I, I think part of the inspiration is that I just have hit that phase of life where I seem to be having and attending a lot of dinner parties. And of course, the sci-fi nerd in me was just like, okay, well, let's take this to the uh, a different setting. Uh, you know, what's happening beyond the walls of this sort of cozy communal atmosphere and what's what what is this atmosphere of and the community that um is supported at a dinner party what is that uh helping the the people at the party sort of like get over or get past or you know look past what's happening outside of these walls and so that was part of the inspiration for just like, okay, we're focused on these walls, but beyond the windows and the doors, there may be all sorts of things going on and getting a hint of that world while living in that drama uh, was the inspiration for the piece. That's very cool. You also hit something really interesting. There's the old expression, uh, uh, Nero fiddled while Rome burned. And and I yeah. really I really get the idea. It's like, I, I have this expression, are you, are you a, a genius by accident or on purpose? And and it seems you've touched into this thing of they're having a dinner party as the world is ending. What kind, That's such an image right there. Uh, uh, the whole piece sounds fascinating, but that right there, it's like, we just don't realize. We just don't realize. We say, oh, please pass the wine, but we don't know what's happening outside. Really intense, yeah. really, really great. When does it happen? When does it happen at the festival? We're playing Saturday at 1 p.m. in the E Tree Shorts block. I think I'm playing with Ruel, yeah. uh, who's who's also here. we so looking buddies. forward to that. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And uh, yeah, this film was produced in Austin. We're local, so we're excited to be there. And I'm excited to meet a, our, our fellow sci-fi genre fans. Wow. 1 p.m. on a Saturday. Who did you bribe to get such an amazing <laughs> slot? <Wow. laughs> Oh my gosh, I, I, right I, I have a on a Saturday. Say, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Good luck to you. All the best. Good for you for spreading another powerful message. And and whether you're a genius by accident or on purpose, guess what? You're a genius. Good. That's great. Thank you, sir. Joan. Joan, tell me about your film. Hello. Um, I'm Joan Cass, and I'm the writer and director of Rest. Um, and Rest is a short um, about a group of people who have inadvertently become uh, immortal uh, by taking a vaccine. And the entire piece takes place in a support group for people who want to die. Um, and the entire thing sort of uh, thematically talks about the idea of forever and how how precious life is and how precious the uh, the time that we have is. Are you an optimist or a pessimist by nature? Optimist. Eternal. I thought so. I thought so. I would have, <laughs> I would have had a paycheck on it. I thought so. Okay, let's let's get political for half a second. The lunacy about about vaccinations, about uh, uh, the whole anti-vaxxing thing we had. And everybody was saying, well, no, you know, it magnetizes me and it's going to give me give me birth defects <laughs> and all sorts of things. We're all looking at the negative, but but brilliant. OK, a vaccine makes you immortal. Was that the purpose it, of the vaccine? Uh, no, no, it was an it was an accidental, you know, cause of the the vaccine. So the funny thing is I, I wrote this three years before COVID. Um, so it was sort of a, we, we finished it after COVID, but I wrote it, I wrote it years ago. Um, so it was kind of a surprise uh, tie-in. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a commentator on a television program on ACW TV called Watch, and we examine classic movies and television and we look at the old sci-fi shows of the 50s and there are so many that are cautionary tales that if we just looked at them a little harder, maybe we wouldn't have gone through COVID because they talk about... <laughs> pandemics and the fact that that you're saying this 
uh, it's very funny. I can almost see the the drug commercial for that vaccine may cause immortality. Right. Um, <laughs> really intense that you're taking this positive look, and and you're saying, okay, the vaccine. Well, for some people, it's more. positive. Don't forget, it takes place in a room full of people that want to die. <laughs> and there's the real curveball. Wow, wow, that must yeah. be fascinating. The dialogue in that must be absolutely fascinating. When when does the show open? So we are uh, show on Friday at five fifteen. Five up oh, pre dinner, excellent. Everyone can go to <laughs> dinner afterwards and talk about the ramifications of your film. Wow, that is terrific! Oh my God, these stories that you that you all are like giving me is really amazing. Um, good luck to you. Great, Thank can't you wait so to much. hear more about it. And and if you find that vaccine about immortality, uh, um, uh, let let me know. I'll 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 get a shot or two <laughs> of that easily. Wow, Ruel, am I pronouncing you right? Yes, yes. Ding, there you, you go. Right. Well, tell me about your film. And thank you. And Joanne, just let me get a heads up on your scripts so that I have an idea what's happening in society, um, you as, as you write. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Ruel. I am the director of Angel Prime, um, a sci-fi short that's playing on Saturday the 17th at the 1 p.m. slot. Um, and it's a, I would consider it's a, it's a tense sci-fi drama. Um, it's about three soldiers trapped behind enemy lines on a desert planet while autonomous uh, drones hunt them. And the captain of the soldiers is faced with a tough decision, um, terminate an unstable soldier that's on the brink of exposing their whereabouts or try to talk him down off the ledge so she can get them all home safe. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, it, it's funny you say a tense drama because I... I'm I'm not thinking of any humorous retort regarding this. I'm I'm asking a, a big question. When did you write this? When did you do this piece? When so you... I I was not the writer. So it's a it's a fellow VFX colleague of mine who brought the original story to me um, prior to the pandemic, and I fell in love with it. And um, I wanted to explore the I would say the uh, what I call a, a classic proverb: "No good deed goes unpunished." And how, like, you know, leaders sometimes have to choose between a noble decision and an objective decision. And um, sometimes choosing the noble decision doesn't lead you to the results you want. Oftentimes, you know, choosing the noble decision forces you to live with the objective decision. And, and so I wanted to see what that felt like in the context of a sci-fi film. Okay, and, and, and the reason my brow is furrowed there have been soldier films in science fiction for for time time and memoriam. We're in a world right now where all around us there's there's war and and we see more in the horizon. How does that uh, how does the world outside affect how we're going to look at your film? How do I you think, think I think the world outside. So the name of the character, which the captain's name, her Monica, is Angel Prime. And the the three soldiers are a part of rejects. They're rejects. They're they're dispensable. Um, but she wanted to bring everyone home, and so she has the 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 character of a leader. Um, when everyone else wants to give up, she wants to try to get everyone home. And I think, I think amidst wars, you know, we we tend to look to leaders or people of character who you know you know at all costs you know weigh the decisions of trying to keep everyone safe and bring everyone home. So, okay, it's it's funny. I'm getting I'm getting this image of Ukraine because we're, as we talk about the leader there, it's it's you, you're 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 giving you're giving us a very strong parable underneath that, and that's really amazing, really impressive. When did you say Thank it was you. going up? You said it was Saturday at one. Saturday at one p.m. Slap buddies. You got you, there. You go. You you got you got the matinee. Good for you. Thank you. May we all watch this and may we all walk out of the theater silently saying, you know, let's rethink our thoughts on war. Let's why are there war? Why? Let's let's all look at war hardly, uh, harshly again. I don't think I think we're getting you know, it, it sounds funny to say this. OK, there's one war. There's another war. There's one, So we're bored with this war. Let's look at this war. Let's see about getting rid of them all. And, and may your film start such conversations. That's great. Thank you. That's that's really great. Wow. Marta, tell us tell us about your film. 
Hello, nice to meet you all, first of all. It's so great to be a part of this, so great to be hearing your stories. Um, so my short film, I'm the writer, director, and one of the producers of a short film called Out of the Grey. And our short tells the story of Laura, who's a pregnant environmental refugee who's forced to leave her haven in the hope to find medical support and safety for her unborn baby. And the film touches on present day issues like the cost of living, global warming and the refugee crisis and is set in an um, inhospitable world. So that's kind of the sci-fi aspect of it. Okay, what's the inspiration? What, uh, uh, why? It, it, well, it seems almost obvious, but but what in you said, I have to tell this story? So I'm Portuguese and, um, you know, I've, I live in London. I'm currently in London. And, you know, first of all, like being from Portugal, like it happens in a lot of countries, we have wildfires that sadly have kind of going out of control. Every year they're becoming more and more intense and people are losing their homes. And And it was actually during the pandemic, I started thinking like, what what would happen if Portugal got to a place that we were forced to leave due to these environmental reasons, you know, and I was, I became a refugee or I, my daughter in one day became a refugee. So, and that was kind of the source of everything was just like, you know, we are, and, and there's a huge refugee crisis in Europe and in the world really, but, you know, as you know, in Europe, we're very aware of it and in London, very aware of what's going on. And so all of these things were kind of bubbling in my head and I was like, it feels so sci-fi in a way, but so pressing because we're seeing people being forced to leave. We're seeing people for reasons that are not political only or, you know, or or religious where people are forced to leave because there's the floods and, you know, there's fires. So that was the backstory. And I just felt I, as I started thinking and putting myself in those shoes, I was like, oh, damn, I just the story kind of just came in my head and hmm. I felt like I needed to tell it. You 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 bring up you bring up an interesting thing. We flipply in this country, and I, I we all know the reason why. But nonetheless, because of the impending election, we all say, "Well, if so and so is elected, I don't want to be here anymore." Mm. We say this with such flippancy. Mm. But what is it really like to have to leave for your right. own survival? Leave your your country, your your place of origin, for your own survival? It's a devastating thought. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, and, I, when, and that was like, and, and you were mentioning Ukraine, but you know, like you see so many people were forced to leave and, you know, and it's, yeah, so we facing, and I know that in the future is not a very positive outcome, but I know that in the future, we'll, there'll be a lot of displacement for a number of reasons. So, yeah. Well, we're hearing it now. We, again, we have these comedic routines about, about these, these individuals who are shipped from one part of this country to another who escaped their land. And we're, we're, again, it becomes the fodder for, for late night comedy, but they had to leave their 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 home just to survive and and that's a devastating thought right yeah um yeah. Uh, oh, the, when, when when is it opening when is, when is your show performing? it's actually is that i don't know exactly the day because it's showing online so i'm waiting to get the schedule but it's, it's showing online so it will be available um oh excellent you're part of the virtual that's wonderful yeah. Yes, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, the Sci-Fi Film Festival, you don't, yes, it's nice to go to Boston. I was there last year. It was gorgeous. But <laughs> you can also see a myriad of events online. So if you're in any part of the world or, hey, this is science fiction, any part of the universe, and you want to see, and you want to see one of these films, there are opportunities, including this interview series we have here. I, I wish you all the luck with it. Congratulations on it. And, and. Bravo on on a very powerful uh, and, and and as you say, very personal message to you. Really great, really really so great. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, tell it. Hi. Tell, tell us about your cautionary tale. Well, um, so I'm from Finland. Um, my name is Hannah Vastensalo, and I directed my first feature film, which is Palimpsest. And Palimpsest is a story about two elderly people who uh, go into a medical trial, and it causes them to begin get younger and um it's about their journey into something completely new uh and they soon realize like that uh growing young is just it's not mm -hmm. just fun and about their family and society who also don't know what to do with them or how to deal with the situation that's great that's great you're, you're tapping into something that's that's been around a long time. Rod Serling did a Twilight Zone episode where you can exchange bodies for a younger, 
for a younger veneer and and uh, it wasn't a happy ending if i remember the episode correctly um what prompted what 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 in you or in your world made you decide okay i'm going to talk about aging in this world no uh, well so okay so my background is that i have a um i did a phd in molecular genetics in medical genetics and and people study this quite a bit and and during COVID, I when we were stuck in, you know, we were stuck and with our thoughts, I started thinking that what if, what if we are successful and what would happen? And I think the most interesting story is that if we really would be able to do it. And I mean, think about it, you would be the first person in the world to get young. And nobody, I mean, nobody has done it before. So I mean, it's just like everyday thing is like. How would you deal with suddenly, you know, being a teenager again and having to figure out what am I gonna do now? It's it's so funny you say that. I I'm I'm of a certain age, so that when someone says uh, be a teenager again, it, my immediate thought is to say, how great is that? But I don't think any of us really really realize that uh, it's not being a teenager when we were a teenager. It's mm -hmm. being a teenager in this current world, and what does that look like? What does that sound like? So yeah. you're 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 giving us a, a you you're you're kind of you're giving us the red herring. You're 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 saying you want to be young again, yes, but yeah, then, yeah. Then there's the the Serling twist. That's great. Exactly. That uh, that's literally what what I was trying to do is like to have the audience ask that question is like what would you do if you would have like a second chance to begin again and I mean would you allow yourself to have it because of all the stuff that you have already you know kind of all the baggage that you're carrying with you oh that's oh that's <laughs> interesting you know I never even thought about that okay yeah I'll get younger but everything that's up here we always say oh good I'd like to be I'd like to have this mind but in a in a 25 year old body yeah. do I really want this mind in a 25 year old body. Wow. When when does the show happen? So unfortunately, I don't know the time. <laughs> Give us the name again so we can look for it uh, online for it. So it's Palimpsest. Say it again. Palimpsest. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, look for this. If you've ever looked in the mirror and said, I wish I was young again, watch this movie. Thank you. Good luck to you. This is you're a molecular biologist. Yeah, I did molecular genetics, medical genetics before I went to film school. So yeah. <laughs> and there you have it. So th there's a lot of authentic stuff in this. That's great. Best of luck to you. Looking forward to this film. Looking forward to it. Ken. Yes. Tell uh, us about your work. Well, uh, this is a um this is a, um, mine is a, a web series. It's a micro series oh, cool. in 10 episodes. And the episodes are only three minutes long. And uh, mine's a comedy. Uh, it's called New Moon. And um, it's about um, this guy who wins a, a, a Super Bowl contest for a two week vacation on the moon. And uh, so he's staying, uh, he's, he's, he's landed there and um, he's supposed to be there for two weeks, but he's being sent by private companies rather than NASA. Like he's being sent by like sort of a carnival cruise company and then um, like a, a phone company, uh, Dash Communications and, and uh, Starstruck Coffee, all these, this consortium of companies has sent him to the moon. But uh, the pan another pandemic comes up and he's, he's, um, uh, and, and the companies go bankrupt as a consortium. So he's stuck there on the moon. So it's kind of a meditation on um, uh, on being isolated, like like uh, during the pandemic. You know, that's what sort of inspired it. And um, so he's stuck up there. So it's it's all a series of two person scenes where he's talking to his wife and then another one where he's talking to his lawyer uh, and then he's talking, uh, then he's talking to himself. You just see him on his own. And uh, he's talking to an engineer who's trying to keep him sane by talking to him and, uh, you know, so that he doesn't lose his mind, but he does kind of lose his mind. And, uh, so, um, then, then he starts hallucinating a little bit and, um, uh, it sort of goes from there, but it's a micro series. So it's only the whole thing plays out in just half an hour. Um, but it's kind of, it's sort of a satire on, um, uh, space tourism that was coming along, you know, and 
you know, if you go on things like space.com, they did just like the futures, like Star Trek, you know, according to them, like we're just going to be like going to Mars and going to all these different planets. So it's sort of a satire about that and about, you know, like uh, the company Nokia actually is putting a 5G network on the moon. Why? I just, that, that's what I just, I, so like, I was just kind of like, that's what sort of inspired me, the, the sort of madness, you know, to get to the moon again and to go into space. And there's also a, um, a sort of Elon Musk character who's made the whole thing happen. And so he's, you know, but, it, but he's sort of uninterested in that. He sort of has bigger ideas. So anyway, that's, um that's kind of the basic idea. And uh, it's, it's going to be playing um, in the virtual program number two, uh, I think it's called Tarek is the name of the program. And um, and that's where you can see it. And and there's just a few episodes in it. And you sort of see him kind of losing his mind, uh, you know, uh, get it while he's there for so long, you know, month after month after month. So I, th I think this I think they're showing four episodes, uh, the first episode and then he's th then the episode with his wife and then the episode where he's kind of really lost it. And then there's the episode where he's talking to the Elon Musk character. And um, and then that's it. Spoken like a true commercialistic thing. So now we're going to be so excited that we need to find the other episodes of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're giving us this amazing parable about commercialism and, and what it does. And the fact that these companies go bankrupt and there's another pandemic. You're hitting us hard. You're hitting us hard with this. And I think <laughs> that's great. I think we as a culture, we just got to stop. And and something like this, great, good for you, good for you, on the virtual on the virtual program, excellent. And and folks, you'll 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 see these four episodes. And if you know what's good for you, you're then going to get in touch with this man and try to find the other episodes. Good for you, good for you. Can't wait to hear what goes on with it. And also, I can't wait to hear from Nathan. Hey, about his work. Hi, I'm Nate. I'm the uh, writer, director, and producer of Overclocked Origins. And it's actually a fan-funded uh, live-action look at a pre-existing machinima series, which I made during the pandemic. Machinima is when you use a video game to make movies. Um, and it's basically it tells the story of an ex-military uh, former orphan who witnesses the brutal murder of her foster father by nomadic gangs on the frontier of space. And it basically... Uh, it creates, it unlocks all this built in anger that she's carried since she was a kid. And so she goes on this like war path to start eliminating all of these uh, gang members. But it's ultimately a story about how letting go is ultimately how you free yourself from all these problems. It's like instead of picking up the sword, put the sword down and, and forgive yourself for all these things you've been carrying with you all your life. Um, came out of nowhere. I mean, one of our fans just said, I want to see a live action look at this uh, other thing that we did. And so we did it. And uh, wow. now Overclocked is live action. I just learned something. I didn't know anything about Machinima. Am I pronouncing yeah. that correct? Wow. That's yeah, it's a niche thing. Yeah, It's sort of like animation. It's the closest way to describe it. You're you're also uh, hitting on... So I, have a, I had a deeply spiritual friend who who used to say, we get sick mainly because we hold anger and and grudges and things inside of us yeah and eventually it becomes disease right. and and you're hitting that very powerfully and it's very ironic that it's the video game thing because the plot essentially going on the rampage sounds very video game yeah. right wow it it's funny because the main character ava so my wife and i don't have kids but we say ava was born as sort of like our kid because it's half my wife and half me i'm an i'm a veteran and my wife had a very tumultuous childhood and we've both sort of overcome uh our hardships in the past through that philosophy of just letting go and forgiveness and all these other things so it's very cathartic she also voices the character in the machinima series <laughs> That's interesting. So, so the the whole message of it, you're living the message of yeah. of letting go and finding an outlet, finding a positive outlook. You're not you're not picking up the sword. You're picking up the 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 the, the camera. Yeah, uh, exactly. Really interesting. Wow, that I, I learned something. There you go. I I come away enriched from this. When when does it happen? Uh, Eight p.m. on Wednesday night. So, 
Yeah, I think it's the first night. Yeah. Opening day. There you go. Another season opener. Excellent. Excellent. Best of luck to you. Congratulations. Brilliant concept. Looking forward to it. Looking Thank forward you. to it. Uh, Niraj, tell oh. me I pronounced it correctly. Uh, yes, I think you have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take that. I think you have. Okay, that, that'll work for me. <laughs> tell us about your film. Uh, so my film is called Record Play Stop. Uh, it's about a probe, a human-made probe uh, that's far out in the universe. Uh, the probe captures music and it uh, finds itself face-to-face -face with the black hole. Face-to-face -face with a what? I'm sorry? Black hole. A black hole. hole? Yeah. Now, what does it capture as it goes? The probe is capturing what? Uh, music, like music in space. Uh, it's inspired from, uh, you know, human-made uh, probes sent like uh, Voyager. So they capture uh, electromagnetic waves, so which is a sort of uh, musical wave. We can uh, transpose those waves into a he hearing format and we can listen to music. So I was sort of inspired by these waves sent by humans and the way they listen to the universe. They don't see, they, they listen. So that's what inspired the whole film. You're, you have a little little parable underneath that because they come up with a black hole. So you're, uh, and you are all basically living this in the sense that uh, you are creating something wonderful and you have to battle so many things to do it. You have to battle your own black holes to make sure your art survives. So you have, you have this little artist parable going on Within yeah, the... yeah, it is actually because uh, a lot of times, like you create art, and then you question why am I doing it? Uh, after a point, I feel like uh, so the black hole is also a collector is also an artist. It also collects its own waves, so it sees itself as a reflection, and uh, the whole thing is uh, inspired by the fact that. Uh, I was questioning what's the point of life during the pandemic and <laughs> I came across this wonderful quote that you know uh, life is not you don't understand it while you're living it you can only understand it when like towards the end when you see everything that you have done in reverse and uh, yeah I felt like all of us we create our own music as we go through the journey of life and in the end we'll uh, collect all this music and we can have like a symphony of our life and that's what we are looking forward to. A symphony of our life. I don't know if you've noticed it but <laughs> every head here with Ruel being the leader of it all of the heads here were going mm. so good for you. you. You tapped into something very deep with this. When does it happen? When does uh, it happen? Oh. It's on Friday uh, 16th uh, at 8 p.m. Friday at eight, another, oh my <laughs> goodness. That's music to my ears in terms of another prime spot. Good for you. Good Thank for you. you. I wish you the best in this and, and congratulations on, on a really deep, powerful plot that we're all, like I said, you already got the artists doing this. Now let's get the whole audience doing this. Thank you so much. Jeremy, Jeremy, if you wouldn't mind it going in between your beard and, and tell me all about your film, that would be great. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Jeremy Warner, and I am a writer and director of a movie called uh, Villains, Inc. It's on my shirt, but you can't see it because I have a giant beard. Uh, Villains, Inc. is a sci-fi comedy about three low-level hench people who, after their super villainous boss accidentally dies, they discover that he left them destitute because he had been embezzling from them, and uh, they're determined to escape their life of destitution. Uh, they're living in an abandoned grocery store and they decide to try to, you know, go into business for themselves and take over the world on their own. That's great. That's great. What do the low level villains do when the mastermind is no longer around? That's great. And you did it on purpose, right? You grew your beard just so you can have the unveiling of lifting it and showing us your t-shirt. I think that that yeah. was... It's it's been a six year con, you know, just just <laughs> building up to that. So, 
they have. That's, that's so. great. Uh, again, I see a little political message here because there's, uh, again, I, I'll mention no names, but there's a villain somewhere that's trying to take over the world or at least America. Uh, uh, and, and he just recently lost a lot of money. What, 83 something? I don't recall the exact amount. And and I guess he's trying to to salvage himself as well. So so yeah. we have we have that wink of a message somewhere in there. Really interesting. When does it happen? Uh, I'm unsure. I don't I don't know. Uh, it's a feature film, so I, it's playing sometime. Wow, feature films. Okay, yeah, so that's hey. gonna be much much easier for us to find, ladies and gentlemen. Where, if you ever wanted to know what happens to the super villains when they're not super anymore, then then look for Villains Inc. on on the features list for Boston Sci-Fi. That's great. Good for you. Congratulations. I look forward to hearing more about it. Diana, tell us all about your film. Hey everyone, can you hear me all right? Completely. Um, I'm Diana. I am the director and one of the co-writers on May Biscatomer. Now, before you ask, that's in Afrikaans uh, word. The film is in Afrikaans. I'm um, calling you guys from South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa. It's currently almost 10 o'clock now. So instead of trying to explain the word, I just I have a poster that I stole with permission from one of the other festivals. So I can show you the spelling of it. Um, but it basically means uh, my protector. So you can see it's kind of an action-y sci-fi uh, adventure project. Um, it's a it's a young girl in the post-apocalypse and it's kind of an optimistic perspective of the, um, the apocalypse through this young girl's viewpoint. Um, and so she's dealing with these uh, kind of feelings of inadequacy and um, that she's not good enough to be a family protector. Um, in a world where there's these uh, killer robots that are that are hunting um, the last of, of humanity. Um, and so she sets out on this quest to prove herself um, uh, and prove herself to her older sister, who's um, the only family that she has, um, where usually they're just trying to stay in this hovel and, and hide. And she wants to kind of go out and um, basically take on one of these machines to prove that she's um, worthy. And uh, along the way, she's she's trying to set on this quest to find this missing piece and maybe or maybe not, she finds something else. Um, so that's that's all I'll kind of share about it for now, but uh, it's there's, there's action, there's heart. Uh, we did the Holy Trinity of that, which you should not do for short films, which is uh, dogs, kids, and VFX. So you can judge yourself how well <laughs> we pulled all of that off. Um, but uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun making it. Um, we think it has a, a message that everyone will uh, really enjoy and appreciate. And yeah. That's great. That's, you know, I, I commend all of you on a very particular thing, which I'm hearing as I listen to all of you. You have optimistic points of view on the pandemic, on war, on, on, so, I, I'm really thrilled. Normally, normally I, I hear, oh yes, the world is ending and we're all sad. Oh yes, an explosion occurred and now we're all miserable. We're all mutants now and we can't digest vegetables any longer. And you know, there, there's so many of these, these, these dark messages to hear that the, the vaccination makes you immortal, to hear that there is a positive spin on the apocalypse give you so much credit that's what continues the world that's what makes the world go on if, if you're going to say everything's garbage then that's what you get but i i see these positive me messages from all of you and i'm absolutely thrilled when does your film go up so it's it's part of the um virtual program so you'll have to explain to me what tarak means but it's it's a part <laughs> of of that tarak <laughs> I, I'm not even going to try to explain it. I'm just going to say, look for the Terra program. Um, really great. Good for you. Best of luck. Log on, folks. If you if you want a happy ending to the apocalypse, there it is. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I say, and last but not least, there he is with his faithful robot companion and circled around all of these things that look, make him look like he's doing a sci-fi film. Simon. Take us home. Tell me all about your movie. Hi there. Well, I'm. Do you, do you hear me? Yes, sir. 
Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I'm from Sweden, so it's a little bit late at night as well. And this is, um, I'm the director of the short film Lost in the Sky. So Lost in the Sky is about this little guy. Um, he's a rescue robot, but he's not actually ever been able to save someone before. So he has a huge dream of one day become a hero. And uh, the space is big because it's a space adventure. So uh, to find someone and to actually save that person turns out to be a lot harder than he expected. So he has to make a quite a big sacrifice. And um, yeah, that's about it. It's also like a space adventure film that it don't have any kind of 3D effects in it. So it's only practical effects made like miniatures. And we made the space worlds in a water tank with ink. And um, yeah, he obviously we built. So yeah. I give you a lot of credit. I'm old school and give me the stop motion. Give me the, the, Give me the background that's supposed to be space. Give me, do we almost see the wire where the planet is? Uh, that's fine. That's fine. There's there's a heart to that that is amazing. Now, I didn't know anything about your film. And so when I said you're all being optimistic, look at what we end with, a robot whose task is to help people and he's going to go to any length to do so. That's yes. that's great. That What time is it out there? You said it's pretty late out there. Where where What time is it? Oh, I think it's uh, 8 or something. I don't know. I'm just 8. sitting here working. So. <laughs> 8 p.m. Ah, that's not late. You're a filmmaker. No, I don't. <laughs> Tell me at 2 in the morning that it's late. Yeah, uh, it's true. Uh, so when when is your film happening again? I'm, I'm actually not sure. Uh, my producer knows. But you can watch the trailer. It's uh, online. And then we show some uh, BTS from it, like behind the scenes. Uh, from how we made it uh, it's quite actually quite interesting to see um, so just search for lost in the sky trailer on youtube and you will find it lost in the sky great title and and uh, folks if you're old school like i am and you want to see the classic way of doing something there it is uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you all so much it has been a pleasure to hear about your films i wish you all the best of luck with this and and may you go on may may i hear your name over and over again changing the world one motion picture at a time uh thank you for having us. ladies thank and you gentlemen so thank you my thank pleasure you. Thank my you. absolute pleasure ladies and gentlemen log on to boston sci-fi film festival.com it is now it happens next week and it runs and there is a virtual level as well as the on-site in boston this is the finest of the futuristic films Learn about the world through the lens of the science fiction thought process, and you will not be sorry. Thank you all very much. All the best and happy opening to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice to Thank meet you. all of you.